You might think you just clicked on a three-year-old video, but unfortunately, we're still talking about TanaCon. What's up, guys? Today, we have to talk about TanaCon because the CEO behind the event went on Dr. Phil to try and clear his name, and Tana isn't happy about it. It's a mess, so let's get into it. Before we get into the tea, I have to expose today's sponsor, Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve is an online adult store, and they've given me a discount code for you guys over the age of 18 to use. Just head over to adameve.com and once you're done shopping, you're going to want to use the code SPILL. Code SPILL is going to get you guys 50% off of one item in your cart and free shipping to the US and Canada. A few perks of shopping with Adam and Eve is you get 24-7 customer support, 90-day hassle-free returns. Not only that, but Adam and Eve also donates 20% of their profit to fight the spread of HIV. So that's code SPILL for 50% off of one item in your cart. Some exclusions do apply and free shipping to the US and Canada. Thank you Adam and Eve for sponsoring today's video. Don't forget to use code SPILL and let's get into the tea. So I think by now we all know what TanaCon was. Tana got mad that VidCon wouldn't make her a featured creator, so she thought she could do it better than VidCon and hired a bunch of fools with a bit of money. That amazing combination of events birthed TanaCon. Well, TanaCon was so bad, I think it's safe to say that most of us thought it would 100% end Tana's career. Like, I don't know how anyone could trust her after that. But unfortunately, Shane Dawson came in and saved Tana. At this time, Shane was still very much liked and seen as some savior on YouTube that showed us the good side of problematic creators. Shane made a multi-part series on Tana and pretty much shifted all the blame on Michael Weiss. Now, don't get me wrong, he did call Tana out, but honestly, all his documentary did was show Tana crying and made her out to be a victim of Michael. Even though Tana did play a huge part in the failure of TanaCon, Michael was mostly blamed by Tana and the public. He tried to save his reputation by releasing a documentary with footage from the event, but judging by Amazon reviews, that didn't help his case either. Well, it's now three years later, and Michael has gone on Dr. Phil to try and clear his name. The episode is called Social Media Outcast. The organizer of TanaCon speaks out. Turns out, Tana actually knew about this Dr. Phil episode happening because she was asked to be on it. Last year, she tweeted, Dude, like five months ago, Dr. Phil asked me to go on to expose this person for over and I didn't and the episode is airing soon with all the tea. I'm excited. So I'm guessing when Tana was pitched this idea last year about going on Dr. Phil, she was probably told it was going to be an episode exposing Michael. But then the preview aired and it almost looked like it was about to be Michael exposing Tana. So Tana assumed that it was going to be bad and she tweeted, should I send Dr. Phil a cease and desist lawsuit for fun? Now, if you know anything about Dr. Phil, normally someone will go on his show trying to push one narrative, and that is never the way it plays out. It was no different for Michael. The episode opens with Michael explaining how before TanaCon, he had this thriving business and everything was peace and love until he met Tana. He explained what happened at TanaCon from his perspective and how he was forced to file for bankruptcy and has dealt with everlasting internet hate. Michael says he wants to clear his name and call Dr. Phil because he's the only person that would relate to him. Luckily, Philly shut that down real quick and was like, um, I don't know you. And Michael's like, well, I have 300,000 followers. Already off to a bad start. Now, clearly Dr. Phil watched a few videos on what happened because he was calling Michael out on all the little lies that he said throughout the entire interview. Dr. Phil asked Michael that if he was more behind the scenes, how did everyone know to blame him? And Michael said it was because he had to go out there and call off the event. And Phil was like, um, no, no, no. You make your assistant do that for you. Then they got into the whole ticket situation. Dr. Phil asked Michael if the event was supposed to be free like Tana claimed it was on social media, why were people chanting for a refund outside? Michael claimed it was because they gave out only several hundred free tickets to the event and only a few had to pay for special tickets. Which also contradicts what Tana said in a 2018 tweet saying, thousands of free tickets were gone in two minutes. Now here's the good part. They then brought on this girl named Amanda who actually attended TanaCon and she was definitely taking this opportunity to tell Michael exactly how she felt about the event. Amanda says the safety of the attendees wasn't even thought of. 
She said there was no food or water even available, and it was a hot summer day with people waiting outside in line for five plus hours in no shade. This is where Michael butts into the conversation and says, um, actually, we had food trucks outside, and Amanda wasn't taking any of his and actually claimed that once they were inside, they couldn't even exit the building to go back out and finally get food or drinks. Now, Michael acted so confused at this, and he was like, oh, well, who told you you couldn't go outside? And Amanda goes, your security that you hired told us that. Amanda also said there was only one Starbucks inside that was so packed that you couldn't even get in the door, and there was also a restaurant that was labeled for influencers only. Throughout this entire interview, Michael kept mentioning how this event took months and months of planning, but that's actually not true. Amanda pointed out how Tana actually made her F VidCon video back in April, then decided to do her own convention in May and held it in June. At best, they had maybe a month of planning. Dr. Phil even pulled the security protocols, which by the way, have the bare minimum instructions on them. Like no wonder these security guards had absolutely no idea what to do. But Dr. Phil asked Michael when he actually signed the security contract and he had absolutely no idea. But Dr. Phil did. The security contract was signed on June 22nd, the day of TanaCon. Even Michael's ex-staff came on the show and backed up what Amanda was saying. They said it was an unorganized mess from the very beginning. They said they actually only had nine employees planning the event and not a hundred like Michael claimed. An ex-employee even said the gift bags that Tana and Michael claimed were worth three times the ticket price were actually only worth $10. Surprisingly, Tana wasn't really talked about at all throughout this entire episode. I don't know if it was because she declined doing an interview so they weren't allowed to, but she got away without really being called out. Tana actually reacted to the episode on her Instagram stories, and she seemed to be pretty happy about the outcome. I just want to shout out Dr. Phil for really having my back. Whoever would have thought. <laughs> she also went on Twitter and tweeted about the episode, writing, I'm going to do a YouTube video reacting to Dr. Phil. Oh my God, I'm screaming. Dr. Phil had my back today. Judging by the comments under the video too, it looks like the episode didn't help Michael's case at all. I bet he regrets reaching out to Dr. Phil now, huh? He's not sorry at all. You can hear it in his voice. He should never be able to plan an event again. He can't be trusted. As one of his old clients, this is amazing to watch. Sounds like he got the venue overbooked and doesn't want to admit to the mistake. Now, I think this is coming out at just the perfect timing because recently Michael announced his newest venture, a music label, and he even signed Danielle Cohen. What could possibly go wrong? Even though I think it's amazing Dr. Phil is calling out Michael, I think we need to remember that Tana is equally responsible for what happened. At the end of the day, all this happened because of her ego and wanting to have a bigger event than VidCon during the same time as VidCon and in the same location. I just don't think Tana should be so quick to be happy tweeting about Dr. Phil having her back, when really, she should be held to the same standard as Michael. Anyways guys, let me know what you think about everything down below. If you liked the video, hit the thumbs up button because it really does help my channel, and I'll see you next time.